In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick breakdown of this uh, pretty simple stylized table prop. And uh, so first things first, uh, here I'm just showing you the final result in Marmol Set Toolbag. Uh, this is typically how I go about uh, uh, rendering my models for the YouTube channel and also just for personal stuff as well. So this is the final model with the textures and everything. Uh, but in this video, what I want to do is going to give a quick breakdown of the actual um, modeling process. So let me just go ahead and play the video here, which is uh, how I started making this. So basically what I did for this one was I made a low poly in Maya. Now the pieces that I ended up with at the end are not the same uh, low poly pieces that I made in Maya. The reason I used Maya was just to create the base models, uh, which essentially means uh, just creating some simple shapes that you can then use in ZBrush and pretty much do whatever you want with, which is pretty much what I did in this video for this model. Uh, so I created the, uh, the basic shapes for the wood parts and uh, and I also added a like a mantle on top of this piece. And that basically is the final um, geo for the mantle, mostly because it doesn't necessarily have to get too complex. For the most part, it's just a plane with some bevels on the edges. And I was not planning on making a lot of changes to that, uh, as far as the shapes and the silhouettes of the model for the actual um, cloth that goes on top of this. And for that, I kept the final model. Uh, but like I said, for the actual wood, uh, these are basically just um, base shapes that I'm going to use later in ZBrush to start sculpting. So let me fast forward this. And before I export it to ZBrush, uh, one thing I did do was I added some supporting edges to um, the cloth pieces. This is essentially a duplicated mesh, a duplicated folder with all the meshes. And these have the underscore high because that's going to be my high poly models. And here I'm just looking at what it's going to look like once I press 3, uh, which in Maya pretty much is just like a smooth preview mode. That's essentially what it would look like if you just smooth the model uh, in ZBrush. So I exported the high poly. And then in ZBrush what I do is I import using the FBX importer, uh, mostly because it keeps your uh, groups and for the cloth, because this one is a single-sided mesh, I went ahead and enabled double-sided here in ZBrush. So if you're working with uh, single-sided meshes, you can, uh, under the display settings, you can just change that to double-sided. Now, if you are going to use this for like a game, um, I would probably give it thickness, uh, just because it's cheaper to use Geo than to enable a double-sidedness on, on the material in like something like Unreal. And like I mentioned, uh, these are my base models for the wood planks here. And uh, for these, since I'm going to be essentially remaking the low poly for it, I'm just going to go crazy with it. I decided to go crazy with it and just change the shape as much as I wanted. And I did not worry about the uh, original low poly shape. And in this case, I ended up using the uh, it's called the AJ Polish Brush uh, with, uh, with a square alpha. And it's really similar to using the Mollet Fast Brush. It's pretty good just for like adding edge damage. And honestly, this was also my first time trying this brush uh, for something like this. Uh, this is a nice brush for things like, um, like rocks. Uh, but for, for this, uh, this was my first time actually trying this one out wanted to see what results I got. Uh, typically for wood, I just use like the dam standard just to add some um, like the wood veins and stuff like that and just add a little bit of edge damage with the trim dynamic. But I wanted to try something new with this one so I decided to use this brush. So let me fast forward this a little bit. So one thing I also mixed this with was the, the clay polish just to add the wood veins on it. And just like surface variation, because I noticed that it was just way too flat. 
it does look a little bit mushy here uh, but later on I do use the trim dynamics just to make it a little bit more more sharp so here at this point I decide to start using the damp standard just to add some really sharp um, creases here and just defining some of those shapes a little bit more so let me fast forward this a little bit so once I had the general shape um, it also was also look a good thing to just look at your model in context with everything else but at the end once I was done I decided to apply a clay polish and clay polish just pretty much makes it so that it uh, just kind of smooths out some of the surfaces so let me fast forward this I think I use it a little bit further ahead and then also later on one thing I decided to start trying was to use the clay brush um, notice that it kind of adds this kind of like bumps to it which kind of makes it look a little bit interesting almost like there's layering going on oh by the way uh, if you are a patreon or if you're on the uh, premium page then you can just watch this video at a regular speed this is mostly just a breakdown of it so at this point I applied that clay polish and as you can see that some of the shapes you do lose some of the shapes um, I think I added some sharpness to it as well so that I didn't lose all of the shapes but essentially it just smooths out things and if you have hard edges it kind of make them, makes them a little bit harder looking as well for the legs of the table I pretty much just used the exact same technique now notice here that at this point I did a subdivide but it just kind of broke the shape that's because there are no supporting edges here and I think what I tried was I tried adding some supporting edges but I believe at the end I just uh, clicked a close hole piece as well and then just added a few supporting edges and that allowed me to just divide it I could have also just enabled uh, Dynamesh and that would have closed the hole and also kept the shape uh, and since in this case I was not going to use the original low poly anyway it would not have mattered if I had done that so I used this yet the exact same technique for that and then for the cloth uh, for the most part I just used the uh, damp standard just to add a few creases here and there but I didn't do a lot to it really and then the final step was to um, dyna not dynamish, uh, decimate the model so this is where I get my low poly from um, so I pre-process all the models and then I decimate it typically I try the lowest number I can get um, as long as I don't lose the the shape of the high poly too much uh, because if if your low poly the silhouette of your low poly is way too different from the high poly you might end up with some um, artifacts on edges some artifacts on like UV edges and stuff like that so you still want to keep it in a way that you know it's low poly but still supports the uh, the original shape of the high poly or it's close enough so I think I ended up with this one which is close enough to the original high poly and this became my low poly now there are some uh, the one thing I don't like about decimation is that you do end up with some like really long triangles sometimes you also end up with really weird geometry that you kind of have to fix and this one does have some of that I don't think I cleaned that up in this video but I um, I do recommend people to do clean up after doing decimation uh, because you also get some unnecessary geo as well sometimes so back in Maya what I did was I pretty much used that low poly and then just did the UVs um, for this model it's just standard UVs typically what I do is apply a planar map and uh, cut my mesh and then just unfold it orient the shells and just lay out Uh, same with these pieces now like I said this one the low poly here is not really clean I would recommend cleaning it up all right so let's move move ahead to uh, substance painter so in substance painter typically what I do is I just uh, use the default settings uh, when you create a new project and then I bake maps typically by using name mesh so that's why my low polys are always named underscore low and my high polys are underscore high and obviously they share the same names 
and I like to apply some anti-aliasing. Also notice here that I only bake the uh, normal and the world space. Um, I typically do that if I'm suspecting that there might be some artifacts uh, when I bake. Because uh, you don't want to wait for all the maps to bake. Uh, if you end up with an artifact, uh, you can always spot that just by looking at the normal map or the world space. In this case, I think it turned out fine, so once I did uh, double checked on that, I just went ahead and baked all the other maps. Uh, for texturing, this one was pretty straightforward. Um, I used my stylized materials, a 3DX 2.0 stylized material. Um, there's a link in the video description if you're interested. Uh, but I used that, it's pretty straightforward, just kind of change the colors for the most part. Uh, but I did create another layer on top so that I could add some, uh, some more details to the cloth. Just so that it's not just like this simple uh, looking cloth, but just with one color. So I added a pattern to it. And then one, one thing that I also did was I enabled opacity because I wanted to have um, some edge damage on the cloth. So it's not like new cloth, uh, but it just had a little bit of damage. So I did that by just enabling uh, the opacity shader and added a channel with opacity. And I'm pretty much just uh, painting that out. And I think that's pretty much it for this. Uh, one last thing I did uh, was I added an extra layer with the, with the curvature map on it. because so I felt like the, some of the edges were getting lost a little bit. They were a little bit too soft. So I ended up making a new layer uh, under the color map with a, with a curvature map and the levels on it. And I set that to overlay and also decrease the uh, layer intensity on that. But that's pretty much it for this breakdown. Uh, let me know if uh, anything just wasn't clear or any part of the process just didn't make sense. And also if you want me to do more uh, breakdown videos like this one. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, you hit the like button, uh, subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you in a future video.